We live in an incredibly fast-paced society. For the majority of us who live in an urban environment, we don't get to spend much time with our animal companion, particularly during the work week. This is why doggy daycare centers, dog walkers, and boarding facilities are so busy. Like any relationship, the lack of quality time, touch, and connection can make us insecure, distant, and anxious. Dogs experience the same anxiety, but unfortunately they tell us with behavior that is not always acceptable. There is so much truth in the statement that a dog is a man and woman's best friend. They work, live, and play with us. They are family members. Billions of dollars are spent each year on our dogs for health care, food, gifts, entertainment, and daycare. We give so much to our animal companions, but for many of us, time is the commodity in which we fall short. The quality of time spent with our animal is as important as the quantity of time. Through massage or touch therapy, you can attain quality time within minutes. Unlike petting your dog, which is a wonderful expression of love, massage is a touch with focus and intent. Massage, by definition, is the manipulation of any soft tissue of the body. Soft tissue includes skin, muscles, ligaments, tendons, and connective tissue. Massage affects the internal organs and all the systems of the body. More and more people every day are discovering the value of massage. People are learning about massage through the media, workshops, pet professionals, or by instinctively working with their own pets. The effects and benefits of massage are the same for our animals as it is with ourselves. Massage accustoms your dog to being touched, which can help when visiting the groomer or vet. Massage decreases your dog's stress level. It increases their confidence and social skills and can also enhance their physical health by increasing circulation, which allows the body to heal itself. Massage can also reduce muscle soreness and spasm from the highly active dog to their not so active counterparts, better known as couch potatoes, to the weekend warriors. Massage, along with good nutrition, exercise, and various forms of preventative medicine, can prevent the disease process and keep joints healthy and fluid. Massage increases circulation which helps move oxygen and blood throughout the body while removing toxins and waste products. Our pets look healthier as their skin and coats receive more nutrition, as well as their internal organs. Massage is also a form of passive exercise, which is crucial for the geriatric dog, which can't exercise as much, for the sick dog, which is recovering from an injury or illness, and for the terminally ill dog, which eases their pain. We're here to tell you firsthand about the benefits of massage and just how much we like it. Ten to fifteen minutes of massage a few times a week can have dramatic results. Hi, we're here to show you a few massage techniques that you could do anytime during the day with your dog. And the most important thing to remember is connecting with your dog and gaining their trust. Once you gain their trust, you can do just about any of these techniques 
but it's important that they know that you are there to help them and that they are willing. Never force your dog into a massage and make sure that you get permission from them in doing so. Our dogs are very receptive to touch and they respond incredibly. This I've seen firsthand in the last 13 years of working with people and then the last five years with, with animals. They are more sensitive, so remember, when applying pressure, always look for their feedback. Now for all of these techniques, you want to remember the rhythm in which you're working on, and the rhythm is the rate of speed. Sometimes we want to stimulate our dog. We don't always want to get them in a relaxed state. If they're geriatric or very, um, if they're a couch potato, they don't get a lot of movement or they're overweight, this is a way of stimulating their blood flow and getting them ready for activity, especially if they're an athlete also. And this gets them ready for competition, to go out, it keeps their joints limber and this way they won't be so prone to injury when they go out and play. So whatever your dog's energy level is, you want to match that energy level. So if they're sluggish like this, I'm going to start slow, but if I want to get Joshi up to do some movement, I will speed up my rhythm and incorporate those techniques according to my intent. My intent is to speed them up. If I want to relax the dog, my intent is to slow down the rhythm and the rate of hand movement and get them into a relaxed state. Now the pressure that we're going to use is basically always remember less is more. It's like taking your fingers and pressing your eyeballs very gently. Now you can feel how gentle that touch is. You never want to start out touching your animal with more than that pressure. With the palmer aspect of your hand or your palm, you'll have a more generalized lighter pressure. When you go into using your fingers or your thumb, it's more direct. So remember, the pressure is going to be greater even though you may not necessarily feel it. Your, your easiest indication of what your pressure is, is how they respond. If they're flinching, pulling their limbs away, twitching, or looking up at you, they will let you know that your pressure is too much and to lighten up. The more work they get, the better the pressure it is, the more they can accept the pressure, and they will actually tell you to go deeper, and they will press their body into you. So remember, that you may only get a few minutes of massage originally when you're working with your dog, but the more you work with them, the more time they'll let you work with them. If you're working with a smaller dog, they may not be able to tolerate as much time as a bigger dog. And I've seen very large dogs tolerate almost up to an hour massage, which is the typical length of time for us humans when we get a massage at any given time. Now, it's good to apply massage usually on the floor for bigger dogs. Smaller dogs you can work with on your lap. For today's purposes, we're going to use a massage table. I know for the most part, most of you do not have a massage table, but for this demonstration, we're going to use one. And sometimes I will be crossing over Joshi's body. It's not always indicated to do that, particularly if the dog is standing up or if the dog is sitting down, because that can be kind of invasive, especially if you're not working with your own dog and they're not comfortable. It's kind of like getting into their space and they're not comfortable with it. So, the first technique that we're going to learn is called passive touch or laying of hands. And all that is, is putting both hands on the body, feeling the energy of the dog, and just gently holding that one area. Remember, with all of these techniques that we're doing, you want to breathe. And you don't want to stop breathing because the dog will pick up on that, and they will also stop breathing. Breathing helps the energy exchange and it helps get blood and oxygen to the tissue of the area that you're working. So being in tune with that, you can work passive touch anywhere and it's indicated when other mechanical forms of touch are not, such as if there's any contracture, spasm, or really just a lot of sensitivity in that area. This is very, very, very relieving to hold this. The next technique that we're going to go over is effleurage, and effleurage is long sweeping strokes intended to connect other techniques together, to increase circulation, and to flush toxins and waste material back through the lymphatic system and blood back to the heart. So you always want to work the extremities going up and circular effleurage hand-over-hand hand effleurage,
so they're just a little bit more fluid than staying in one place. This is good for an opening massage technique also, and it's good for relaxation. The next technique that we're going to learn is petrissage. Petrissage is basically kneading of the muscular tissue. Squeezing, rolling, wringing, pulling of the muscle tissue off the bony structure and it's more mechanical in nature. A variation of kneading along with the squeezing is called skin rolling where we're picking up the skin and sometimes the muscle structure and we're kind of like taking it like a spider crawling. We're grabbing the skin and then with our fingers leading in one direction and following with our thumb behind it. This is really a good technique for dogs because a lot of times their skin is very pliable and they have a lot of it around the nape of the neck and you can squeeze and roll and squeeze and roll and you can see he really enjoys that. Again, this is a pumping technique that helps to squeeze the toxins out of the tissue and as you see, I'm following that with an effleurage technique and it feels real good. The next technique that we want to learn is compression. Compression is very effective for recovery after exercise and again it's mechanical in nature. All we're going to do is stabilize. You never want to press down on a joint like we had said before and it works very well for bigger muscle groups or the belly of the muscle. So here working on Joshi's shoulder we're going to take the palmer aspect of our hand and we're going to gently apply using your body. As you see, I'm not pressing down like this because I can't really feel how hard I'm pressing. Just kind of gently moving into it. Now take into account the pressure when we had talked about how much pressure to apply. This is very, very, very gentle. Particularly if the animal has just got done exercising, they're going to be very sore as if they just worked out. If they are incredibly sore, and you'll find this with particularly the hamstrings, which get very, very tight because they use these muscles for jumping. And again, I'm going to stabilize underneath the leg because I don't want to press down on the hip like that. Some gentle compression with a hold. This is called ischemic compression. And what that does is spreads the fibers and it brings muscle, uh, blood and oxygen to the tissue so that it starts to relax. And then you can go in with some gentle compression. Again, it's very, very, very gentle. And then you want to flush it with effleurage. So compression is very good to stimulate a dog before activity. And that's okay if it's a little firmer and you want to go faster you can do this on smaller muscle groups. You might use compression with your fingertips and your thumbs. And you can do this on all parts of the body as long as you're not pressing on the joint areas or the spine. And then finish with effleurage. Next technique that we're going to learn is circular friction. And circular friction is either done with the palm of your hand over bigger muscle groups and you're actually crossing the muscle fibers. Now a lot of times we'll use our fingers, either two fingers, one finger, and sometimes all the fingers to go across the tissue and we're actually pressing the muscle tissue into the bone and applying a friction motion back and forth over the tissue in a circular manner. There are other variations that we can teach, but for now this is more of an assessment technique. And this is good for around the shoulder blades, around bony landmarks. It's good for feeling knots, tight muscles, bands of muscles. And you never want to stay in one place too long. You want to keep moving and then you want to flush out with the effleurage. Remember never to do any of these techniques over any of the joints, the elbow, 
the wrists. You never want to apply any of these techniques directly on the spine, which runs from the top of the dog's head all the way back to the hip area. And again, never any direct pressure, always on the side of the spine. 